One thing is getting the girl or getting the partner. And the second thing is keeping the partner. And that is where true attraction lies. So we all know what it's like when you really want to get the girl. You want to live your most future desired best version of your life. You want to achieve maximum potential and you want to start crushing it. However, your confidence is low. You're not showing up as best as possible. Your mood is down and you're not quite comfortable with you and yourself. And that is probably because in my own experience for my story was I didn't understand how to be attractive or make myself really attractive. So one of the things of being attractive isn't just physically how you look or how you show up to the opposite sex, but it is all areas when people just feel that power and presence from you and yourself as an individual, which makes everyone just want to flock around from you and either buy from you or be led by you or you know, do pull in the person of the opposite sex or, and what is really important, I believe, not just the opposite sex, but one thing is getting the girl or getting the partner. And the second thing is keeping the partner. And that is where true attraction lies. All good and well for things to be fleeting, fleeting relationships, fleeting customers, fleeting employees, fleeting partners, fleeting sexual partners. But to have someone and lock them down is that elite next level of attraction and no matter where your goals are is if you can nail that attraction from someone you will have everything that you want so i spent a lot of time figuring this out i read i read a lot of books and i talked to my partner a lot about this and i've come up with the top seven techniques that you need to use well i wouldn't say that you need to use it's just my version of the top seven tips that i think that people if they use would become super attractive to anyone and I'm going to share them with you. So essentially I've read a lot of books and I've done a lot of manifesting. I've created a multiple six-figure company. I've got personal, financial, time, locational freedom. I have work with amazing people. I run a personal development coaching business. You can check us out at Set the Standard um, on Instagram, Set the Standard Community or head to getstartedwithcorey.com. My website should be somewhere around here. You can actually see what we do. And yeah, I've helped like over 130 people have like jumped into the program and helped them like transform their life, become the best version of themselves so that they can make an impact in the world. Because I believe when men increase their potential, when they understand and realize their true capacity and they're really strong and centered within inside themselves and they can motivate other people, then we can make a positive impact on the world and we can all do it together. It's like rising tides lift all boats. So If I can do it, you can do it. And I hope I inspire you so you can inspire other people to go out there and achieve it. So I wrote down this list on my phone. (laughs) And this is from my partner, by the way. She owns a, you know, a really successful company. She's doing like 70K months, probably more now by the time you're listening to it. And she is absolutely smoking. And I talked to her a lot about this in terms of like, you know, what makes men most attractive and what are the things about me that you found as most attractive? And, you know, what do you look for? You know, what would you uh, look for in other guys that display that? Number one is ownership of your life. And this was even talked about in like the mystery method and some other books that I read on pickup is taking ownership of your life is one of the most biggest attractive things that anyone can, can really do. If you have control over your time, if you have control over your finances, if you have control over your health, if you have control over your mindset, and most importantly, if you have control over your emotions, people are going to look at you more differently. And if you can control those things and you have the ability to show up and have those freedom, you'll be more attractive. So if you're just working like a normal job or your business is just ticking by and you don't have the energy to go out there and absolutely crush it, change it because you'll be more attractive if you do so in all regards. And you'll probably be more attracted to yourself. We should be living and breathing excellence all the time in everything that we do. And if you do this, it's going to create a compounding effect of you feeling like you can own and dominate yourself which is ownership of your life. So regardless of where you're doing, what career you're in or how you're doing, what business you've started, absolutely take it to the end limits, the end limits and crush it. Make it so good and so fantastic that you cannot not be seen because that's going to make you feel so much better. And you're going to have to go through the challenges and the tests and the trials. You know, all men, you see those crazy boot camps that some men do and the Navy SEALs do. It's like, oh, these guys must feel so tough. I bet you... Bet the ass they feel tough. My goodness. Imagine how tough you could feel if you're crushing your goals too. Mm, Get out there and get it. Number two, you can speak with emotions. Now for men, the majority of this time is just being able to label your emotions. Shame, guilt, embarrassment, joy, cheer, happy, love, 
overwhelmed, confident, embarrassed, sad, <laughs> down. So it's just, you know how I'm labeling emotions there? If we're not afraid of feeling and understanding like, oh, for, for men, I, I find me avoid feeling negative emotions. Every time I have to feel a negative emotion, we're like, oh, yuck, don't want to feel that. It comes in and we're like, mm, no. How about if I just look at it this positive and be positive instead? Or when you get really depressed and down, it's like, oh, I'm so, I feel so guilty just for feeling sad. So allow yourself to feel the emotions, especially when it comes to a partner or anyone around you. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling shame. I'm feeling lust. I'm feeling embarrassed. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling motivated. If you can talk in those terms to anyone. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling angry right now. You can communicate and label their emotions, how they are in a specific period of time as you just come across really emotionally intelligent to everyone, right? It sounds so simple. The key to emotional intelligence, label your emotions and get clear on how other people are feeling. Are you feeling frustrated, sad, cheered, joy, shame, proud, embarrassed? What are you feeling? Same thing with you in the current moment. And if you can mention those things and be in touch with your emotions and own them and not feel ashamed and guilty for feeling things, oh my goodness, the attraction just goes next level. And that's what women are looking for, by the way. I talk to my partner a lot about this, especially when they're selecting people in terms of a husband or someone who can hold down a relationship and provide for them and their children for when they're safe because they feel icky and they feel like they couldn't trust someone if they can't speak with emotions because how can you trust someone if they can't be emotional for a girl because he's not going to be able to connect for me. He's not going to be able to lock me down when I've got all my crazy emotions. He's probably got some baggage there that he's not talking to me about. Why don't you hear me? Why don't you listen to me? Why don't you understand me? All of those things come down when it's just like, are you feeling frustrated and angry? Yes. Oh my God, he gets me. (laughs) And from us, oh, okay, sorry. I was feeling really impatient and I wanted to withdraw because of uh, like you could say this because of I didn't understand what was happening and I was quite confused, which made me feel like I was detaching. So I'm sorry about that. You mentioned those things. Like, what? Who is this guy that can speak with emotions? I'm speaking from experience here, guys. This happens all the time, my relationship. Three, confident in one's own abilities. It's just sure of yourself. <laughs> sure of yourself. I'm integral. I say I'm going to do something and I'm going to do it. And I know that I can do this and I'm willing to give it a shot. And I have the ability to pivot when things don't go my way. I'm going to set a goal, try to achieve it. And if it doesn't work, I'll change things around to make sure that it does. And it's sure of yourself. How you can gain that is by doing everything you say you're going to do and set up boundaries that mean that you're to make your yeses a lot more powerful. Because when you say yes, for example, you have to say a thousand no's. So if you say yes to like a hundred different things and try to help this person, give to this person, give to that other person, and now you're slipping on deadlines, not paying people on time, not quoting up invoices things properly, not getting back to customers, running late for meetings and things like that, and you're not you're just a little bit shaky and you're not getting the deliverables done on time, and then you're consistently having to apologize to people and you're not getting back to everyone who's really important that you need to. It's like your boundaries are slipping, and every time you let one of those things go, then you feel less confidence in yourself because you can't trust yourself on a micro level. So your yeses are extremely important and you need to be saying, well, I wouldn't just say you need to. You, I'd encourage you to say no and think about saying no first before saying yes. It's not a full body fuck yeah, it's a fuck no, right? Number four, not afraid to show your girlfriend off or a girl you're dating on social media. So attractive. I don't know what it is. I'm not not sure if it happens with people in the US or Australian guys, but what is really common is guys will like hide that they're dating or seeing someone. Oh, don't tell anybody and I don't know why. What is happening and I find to be so much more beneficial and for everybody and what makes people look more attractive and look like an alpha and look like they care and look like they can provide and they look like a leader, look like someone who's inspiring is if they're not afraid to be seen with a girl, whether it's on a date. Oh, are you just dating this girl? Yeah, we just went out on one date. You could be talking to five other girls, other prospects, <laughs> I could say, for example. You're talking to five other women and you go on a date with someone and you take a date and you're going out on a date with someone. Now, that has also just increased your value. Everyone's, all the people that you've talked to are going, oh my goodness, like, he's going on a date. He's supposed to be talking to me. And it's like, well, I haven't made my decision yet. Like, I'm, I'm, applications are open at the moment and I'm seeing how I feel with multiple people and see how it goes. This is what happens in dating shows all the time. And this is what happens in terms of increasing value with business, with your health, with your friends, with anything that you want to achieve. It's sort of like, if you're not afraid to be seen for it, 
and you can share it and other people see it and you can own for who you truly are in the moment, then that is shows honesty, integrity, and also a higher value because other people are demanded by you. So I think everyone should be sharing no matter what they're doing all the time. Who cares if you're going on a date? It's good and you're having fun, share it. If you're with a partner and you've just leaned into the relationship, be the first one to share something on social media. I love hanging out with this person. They're the best. Look what we're doing today. You can ask for their permission first, but it just shows showing them off. Like for me and like my partner, I like I think it's the sixth love language. There's five love languages you haven't seen the book. Maybe somewhere in here, it could be a link below. But I believe that the sixth love language is sharing your partner on social media. Social media love makes you feel amazing. I love it. My partner shares me on social media all the time. I'm like, yes, I'm the best. So good. Number five, can make time in your work-life balance. Now, this is just presence and priority. So if you haven't got masterful, if you haven't got control over your routine, and if you're addicted to work and you're working 12, 10-hour days every single day and you can't go, oh, something's on right now, you'd like me to be present? Sure. Actually, I'm going to call in whatever it is. I'm going to go get you a coffee. Let's go have a coffee together. Let's go down the beach together. Let's hang out just for a little bit. Let's spend some time on the weekend doing this, 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 this. Let's not overwork. Let's cut off a few of the days around 4 or 5 p.m. and just spend some time together hanging out and chatting and being really present. Chances are, is every time you do that, they're probably going to help you with a really good idea anyway. You're going to feel love. Love increases your mood and your attitude and you make way better decisions. So the love that you have in your life and the presence that you have in your partner reflects to your business results, literally reflects to business results. So if you want to increase revenue and you want to increase your success and make really good decisions, which you can read the book, Deep Work. I put it in my five, should be around here, my five books for 2023 that I think everyone should read. There's a book in there called Deep Work and it says everyone should finish work at 5 p.m. Done. Because you need that time in order to make decisions. This is coming from Cal Newport who helps coach entrepreneurs and business owners make millions of dollars everywhere. And he's one of the best, world renowned. And he's so good and he loves the deep work and it deep work increases our ability to show up as the best version of ourselves. And I love it. Number six is, and I think this is the most important one, by the way, guys, there's one more after this is a bonus one, but this one I think is the most important and it's just integral. Integrity, 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 integrity. I say I'm going to do this, I do it. The reason why gods in Greek mythology, I believe, were labeled as gods. So you think Mount Olympus, Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Hephaestus, Aphrodite, all the gods. The reasons that they were so powerful was because that they, and they could grant wishes, is because they couldn't go back on their word. Zeus would get tricked into granting wishes all the time in the Greek mythology. And whenever he granted a wish, it was a consequence come back for him because he couldn't go back on his word and he'd be like, oh no, and it'd come back and bite him in the bum. So, but he's a god, right? We're mortals. What's the difference? If we make promises, we can break them. And there's no consequences except we feel guilty, ashamed, and embarrassed. Or it gets down on us. And it literally casts a spell over our mind and over our bodies in terms of how we show up. And then we start to distrust ourselves and disbelief in ourselves. And we can't show up as the best version of ourselves and make those really good decisions because it's like, well, I didn't do this thing. It's those little one percenters that work. We all know that, I'm not sure if you guys know the Pareto distribution, but like 20% of people, you know, we've heard about this, do like 80% of the work and 80% of the people don't. Then it's like, well, that happens in that group. So within the 20% of people, there's 80% of the people that don't do as much work and 20% of people that do more work. So it just keeps going around like that too. Like, oh, there's only a couple of people doing, you know, all of the work in a company business, whatever it is. That also comes into with yourself. Uh, well, basically what I'm trying to get across is that. It just means that the little 1% is matter. So for you, all the things that you promise, things you say you're going to do matter. So be careful with your integrity. Show up and crush it. Number seven, last one, is health and self-respect. It's just self-respect for yourself. You take care of yourself. You look after your health. You fit your healthy. You have an exercise that you're trying to become a world-class athlete in and you're trying to crush it somewhere which is why I think every single man should have the one goal to be a world-class athlete in one thing that they do. For whatever they think is, what do you think a world-class athlete looks like? Go out there, crush that. Mine, I'm going to win a world title in the WBFF fitness competitions for sure. So, and I've got ages to do that. I've chosen, I'm going to get on stage and I'm going to compete and I'm going to win a world title or I'm going to die trying. So that is my one thing which I don't negotiate. And my partner finds it so attractive. It's like, you just look after yourself. She's like, you're buying the things, like you're trying to dress well and you're extremely healthy. Like I'm like the most healthiest person I know. Literally out of everyone that I know, I'm like the healthiest person I know. 
And she just loves it. She's like, and you never go back. You're always eating these good things, whatever it is. And just, it shows that you take care and pride of yourself. And that makes me feel safe because in the future, I know that you're going to be able to cope with X, Y, Z, O, X, Y, Z, which is why so attractive. So I wanted to share those things with you guys. And if you are interested in leveling up and setting a new standard, you can apply to work with us to head into get started with Corey.com and you can see the programs and the coaching that are available there, but you have to hand in an application and fill that out to see if you're actually going to be a good fit. If you did like this video, please put a share, subscribe, comment below, and I'd love to get back to you. And just one last little thing. If you coming into whatever goal sets, goal settings that you have in terms of you know whatever year it may be, in terms of really getting clear on your goals. What are your goals and how are you going to be attractive as you can to show up to those? Was there one of the things in here that you're missing? Was there something that you need to actually do? Upgrade your mindset, upgrade your life, raise your own standards and make sure that you are integral with yourself and your goals and who you are specifically. And I promise you, you'll get everything that you want. Catch you later.